Hello, graphic design students. I just coming to you today to talk a little bit more about this type photography project, explain it a little bit more in detail, and hopefully um, gives you enough information that you can go out and do your best with it. And feel free to rewatch this video over and over to get some of those ideas and concepts. So I'm calling it type photography. Um, it's often referred to as alphabet photography. It's a tried and true project. It's, being, it's been used a lot in, in photography classes, graphic design classes throughout the years. And the basic idea is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to go out into the world and you're going to try to capture images that look like the letters of the alphabet. You're probably going to have to zoom in or crop out areas to make it look like that. But an I, a important aspect of this is that it gets you to engage with the world, gets you to look more closely at things, um, gets you outside maybe if you want to go outside during this time. And um, it's just kind of a fun, easy starter project for you to kind of feel like you're engaging in the graphic design project. And then we get to introduce some basic uh, software practices, editing practices as well. So let's talk a little bit more about it, right? The basic concept, as I said, is to find letters in everyday objects or scenes. And this might involve having to crop out an area. So if you like look at the, the letter B in this, this part, like the A, B, C, right? It looks like it was a window and it's like cut off. That window might have continued past this point and it wouldn't look as much like a B, but because where it's cropped, it definitely looks like a B, right? Or, you know, finding things like the, the C in the iron gate over there um, looks like that was just like a, a curve. It might have actually been a C. And I really want to uh, preface this, avoid using actual letters. You're trying to find letters where there aren't supposed to be the idea of letters, okay? So don't like actually take pictures of, of signs that have the letters on it. That's really important. Um, don't do that. Right? You're trying to find letters in areas that you wouldn't have seen them before. It might involve turning something, right? So you might end up taking a picture where it's like, it looks more like an M, but then when you flip it on its side, it looks like a B, right? And so one of the things we're going to do is we're going to learn some of the editing software to be able to do that, okay? So you're going to zoom in, crop. This gets you to look more closely at the world, to focus on details, things that you, you normally don't see. And it's hopefully going to start training your eye to be a better graphic designer. The steps of the project are very simple. You're going to choose a word or a phrase. It must include at least 10 letters. So it could be one word that has 10 letters, or it can be two words of five letters, one of four, one of six, right? Um, you get the idea that there has to be 10 letters total. Uh, and then you go out and you look for those letters, okay? If you want, you can just do the legitimate alphabet, although that's going to be more than 10, okay? And after photographing all your letters, uh, we're going to use Photopea, which is much like Photoshop. It's a free version, uh, online version of Photoshop, essentially, to edit, crop, flip, move around, place them in order, and manipulate the photographs uh, to make them look more interesting. So we're going to talk about some basic elements of, of photography and art and design, like value, contrast, things like that, or color. Um, you're going to learn the basics of, of photography practices with this project. You're going to learn some basic editing processes, uh, intro to those softwares, and you're going to start thinking in new ways about topography and visual communication and how you can see, find things, inspiration in everyday objects that you normally overlook. Okay. So some examples here, um, they don't have to be black and white. A lot of the, the examples I've shown you so far are black and white. It could be totally in color, and that could be fun. You can use color in a certain way. You could try to make it all one color if you wanted to, or just like have a, a color scheme in mind, right? Doing something like, you know, uh, um, you know contrasting colors, complementary colors, or analogous color schemes, right? And your, ex your final version is going to be put in order, you know, much like the word love there, although love is only four letters and you need to have 10 letters, you could add another word to that to make it 10, right? But we're going to put those letters together to create a phrase, or if you wanted to use the alphabet, if you want to do the entire alphabet, you can do the entire alphabet, okay? But 10 letters otherwise. It can include a variety of subjects. You can go inside or outside. Maybe you don't want to go for a walk outside and enjoy the weather today, but you can find some of these, these elements inside as well, or look around for objects that kind of make those letters and place them 
on, on a surface and photograph them really well. You really wanna make sure though, if you do that, if you're placing objects and moving them around, that you have a very clean background for that. So you can see the object in the letter really clearly, like it, in this example, how everything is white behind it. And if you're gonna continue to do that, make sure you use the same background and the same lighting source for each of those pictures, okay? They can be in color, they can be black and white like I suggested. Here's another example of, of uh, color. And this actually has a, a variety of subjects of going inside, outside. You know, you have the A, which looks like the Eiffel Tower. You have the B, which looks like it was scissors taken inside. The C is a uh, cropped out uh, handle on a coffee mug. Uh, the, the E is a fork. The F is a window right? So you're seeing that you can find these examples all over the place in different areas. Just get creative, you know, look around, walk around, explore, and see where that takes you. Jumping in, uh, exploring, inspiration, investigating different ideas. Something will come to you, maybe a vision, maybe a theme will come to you as you're working. The best thing you can do is just start taking pictures and see where it takes you. So as I said, they must form words and include at least 10 letters. So you have an example, live, laugh, love. That would count for this, this project. Under that is the name Albert Einstein. I would prefer it if you do not use your name as the source. I want you to be a little bit more creative, ingen ingenuitive than that. I want you to think a little bit outside the box from your name, right? Um, choose a word or phrase that relates to you in some way. It cannot be your name. It can be a positive affirmation, something that describes you. Maybe there's a, a if you want to use a nickname, I could be okay with the nickname as long as it's not like, like an obvious name, okay? But if it's like a word that describes you, um, for instance, when I was a kid, one of my nicknames was Small Fry, and that could count. But, it, but also it must be 10 letters. So think of a way that you can, you can incorporate maybe some other words or letters if it's not enough. Something you, maybe it's something you enjoy. How can you visually communicate who you are or an idea in this way? Is there a way that you can merge content and form in a more powerful way in that the imagery actually suggests the word? You know what I'm saying? So if you take pictures of an object that actually have something to do with the words you're, you're, you're trying to communicate, that could be really interesting and powerful. So this is going to involve a lot of photography and you don't know a lot about photography yet. So my main question to you is, what is the most important thing needed in photography? I'm sure a lot of you are answering a camera. That's not correct. The correct answer is light. The most important thing needed to take a picture is light. You are, photography literally means writing with light. And um, you don't need a camera to do that. There's a lot of ways that you can take pictures without cameras. Uh, ask me about that in the future and I'll get into it. But what you need to know right now is lighting should be your main focus as you engage in this process, right? Um, there's a lot of different types of light. So in the top left corner, there's an example of um, studio lighting. And what that is is kind of anything not made by the sun. It's not natural light. It's, it's put into the, into the scene. It didn't exist. It wasn't like from the sun. Okay. So you can use indoor lighting. You can use lamps. Uh, studio lighting is, is better to have, but if you move lamps around or spotlights or you can use flashlights maybe in cool ways, you know, think about it, take some pictures, try it out, experiment with the lighting. The best source of light that you can get though is from the sun. And um, you can use the sun by moving objects by the, by the window if you're inside. So think about how you can use window light but also think about the background. Can you move a table over to the window to set up a little area to take some pictures where you have like maybe a sheet of paper creating a background that's really smooth and even, or the table has a nice uh, surface to it that's a good backdrop for some of the pictures. Maybe you can change the backdrop from shot to shot if you want to kind of get a little bit more creative, change it up, have some variety in it. 
But also when you go outside, it's important to know that there's different types of lighting outside. So if you want to have a really high contrast feel where there's not a lot of grays, it just goes from white to black very quickly. Um, taking pictures in the middle of the day when there are no clouds in the sky and that sun is beating down really intensely, it's going to give you a lot of strong shadows, but not a lot of grays. It'll just kind of go from shadow to light very quickly, like that picture in the bottom left corner. If you want to have some more grays in the picture, shooting when there's taking pictures when there's clouds outside or when the sun is not that in the in the middle of the day, just like glaring at you, it's a little bit more on an angle coming at you uh, closer to like sunset or sunrise, you're going to get a little bit softer light. So those are so my tips. I want you to go out. I want you to have fun um, and, and good luck with this project.